With the presidential election only a few days away, we once again decided to gather our all-star panel of local political pundits to discuss this very important and controversial election. This marks their third presidential election for Soul Issue. So let's see what Norman and Jimmy have to say this time around. The 2016 election, uh, there are five key uh, policies or interests that the American voter has uh, stated, starting with national security, the economy, the debt, health care, and global warming. Which candidate, in your opinion, is better suited to address those five major issues? You want me to go first? Sure, go ahead. All right. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Hillary Clinton is the most qualified candidate in, um, in the race right now. Probably the most qualified candidate we've ever had, considering her experience as the First Lady, uh -huh. Secretary of State, U.S. Senator, mm -hmm. and when it comes to all those issues, um, people are concerned, people being the Republicans are concerned that it will be a continuation of the Obama administration. But to me, that's good because Obama has done a great job. You know, least of all, he has no had no um, controversies uh -huh. it, during his administration. Sure. I think uh, the Affordable Care Act has been has 20 million new people on health care. Right. He, uh, he's kept us safe. We've had no major terrorist activity in our country. We've had some lone wolf activity. Sure. However, there's been nothing on the level of 9-11. Of right. um, thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. Uh, our, our status around the world has been raised yeah. as far as, uh, and, the, and the national debt has decreased. Now, could the economy be better? The economy can always be better. Sure. But the fact is, if you look at history, the economy is always better with a Democrat in the White House. Look at Bill Clinton, some of the best years we ever had. And look at Bush, some of the worst years we've ever had. Okay. So it scares me to think that somebody like a Donald Trump will be running this economy for well, the next four years. He says he, 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 he can do it. Mr. Green, counterpoint? <laughs> I, I, I do think uh, Barack Obama, President Obama, has done an admirable job, especially when you consider what he inherited. So sure. uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not remotely going to bash uh, the job he's done. I will say that when you talk about your top five issues, uh, global warm warming would not be one of those uh, as it sits on my side of the aisle. Uh, and, and it gives rise, that number five issue gives rise to the Trump candidacy, and that's the immigration. Sure. Uh, and it's ironic because immigration, national uh, security are, t are two intertwined entities right now, so you can almost call them one and one A on the Republican side. Uh, from the economy, uh, and, and, you know, at, we can go back and forth on whose economies are better. Uh, Republicans, uh, certainly, when you look at what uh, Bill Clinton inherited, for example, mm -hmm. when you look at that, and that's, again, is not to take anything away from President Obama, but what uh, Bill Clinton inherited was a, a, a Bush economy. And typically, the economy is always served. Whomever the incumbent is right now serves up what's going to happen for the next people or the next president. So typically what happens is you get a president that gets way too much blame and some who get way too much credit. You know, those things just don't happen overnight, especially with our economy and the way it is. I mean, it's a series and series and series of years and policies mm -hmm. that craft that. And mo most presidents are never able to enjoy uh, the fruits of their labor. But I do think Norm's right about Obamacare. I, mm. I, I'm not one of those who sit on the right side of the aisle believing that we should just throw the thing away. I think there's some opportunities to reform it. I, I don't think it, 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 uh, it's a perfect bill mm. or law, but I do think it has, it has the remnants of something that we can build upon on a bipartisan basis. Okay. I agree with everything he said except okay. for the, gl the global warming activity. Mm -hmm. you, well, we got we got where they're going on now, right now down in the Caribbean. Sure. That is a, a perfect example of global warming. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about how we leave this planet Absolutely. to our grandchildren, Absolutely. not just our children, but our grandchildren. And it's something we ought to be paying attention to. We're a mm -hmm. more industrialized world right. with the Chinese creating all kinds of carbon sure. um, activity in the, in the atmosphere. And if we don't pay attention to it, mm -hmm. then we're going to wake up one day and say, oops, we had an opportunity that we missed out on. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't want to be one of those, I, and, I, and, and to your point, though, Norm, I want to be clear about that. I, I don't think it's a non-issue, okay? Let, let me make that clear. Mm -hmm. I do think it's an issue, and, but when you talked about the top five, mm -hmm. and I think you can play around with that as much as you want to, but mm -hmm. would it be on my list of top mm -hmm. ten? Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, in turn, and, and I, I guess maybe my top five were more immediate things, and not that global warming isn't important, so 
Mm -hmm. to, to your point, yeah, you, it, we, it's certainly something that we have to address, but I, I don't have it in, in my top five. Well, when it comes to the economy, too, sure enough, George H.W. Bush got through a decent economy. Yeah. Trickle down. Uh, no, that was uh, Reagan. Okay. That was Reagan. Mm -hmm. George W. Bush. I, I forget whether he had eight years or four years. I mm -hmm. think he just had four years. He didn't get reelected. George H. W. H. W. Bush. Four, he had four. He had four years. Yeah. So he wasn't there <coughs> a full eight years. Clinton came in and basically set the economy on fire. When he left, well, there was there was a surplus. Right. When he yeah. left, yeah, but, but what then, did but what did and then, his, he, he, then George Bush came in, and he, after his eight years, and after his tax cuts, the economy. You but, know, we but, lived but through H, that. But H. W. Bush set the stage for Clinton's economy, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to to wrestle with the idea that Bill Clinton didn't have prosperous eight years. He mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. but but that's what cost uh, Herbert Walker Bush his presidency. His next term, because he created, remember the read my lips, no new taxes? Mm -hmm. Those new taxes saved an economy that was about ready to tank. You know, I hear the Democrats say that they've always had to clean up the Republican economic policies and such. And mm -hmm. you can see through the, 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 mm -hmm. the years that the Republicans held the, the office and all, uh, it seems to have been a recession or something to that effect. Uh, with your point about uh, Bill Clinton's. Uh, years Surplus. with the economy was was doing pretty good, and that's probably the last uh, uh, year that we actually balance a budget for. Well, I mean, you go back. I mean, you, you, and we can continue to go back because you know you look at what Reagan inherited. Reagan inherited uh, the, the exact same economy that that Obama did. And only this case, uh, he inherited from Jimmy Carter. I mean, yeah. people forget that seventy six to eighty year we had gas. We had gas crunches. We, I mean, it was terrible. Inflation was going rampant. I mean, uh, savings and loans were were were, fa were failing by the day, and much like President Obama, when he inherited but you know, I, failing I, but institutions, but I think that, that happened under a Republican administration. I, I think that was Reagan's doing. No, 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 no. <laughs> savings and loans was a Reagan no, no, scam. No, 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 no. Those were by Ra those were byproducts of the Jimmy Carter era. And you can go back and look. Jimmy at that. Carter was a one-term president. Too. Yes, he was, and thank God. Well. <laughs> Okay. Well, with that Good being, man, but. Yeah, with that being said, uh, has there been anything in this election sh cycle that has or hasn't shocked you? For me, with, yeah, in your experiences absolutely. With politics, I, I can go back over a year ago when I looked at the stage and I saw Donald Trump is still a shock, and, and I and maybe most people are warm to the idea right now, mm -hmm. uh, but you know when I looked at the stage and I saw sixteen Republican candidates. I thought, uh, you know, as a Republican, you were a kid in a candy store. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my goodness, look at this, look at this sure. bevy of mm -hmm. uh, qualified people. Absolutely. The shock was that at some point, uh, somebody was going to take his knees uh, from under him, and nobody ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, the shock for me was that we had a Republican, a quiet Republican uh, voter, who believed everything he said. I, mm -hmm. I gave Republican voters more discernment than that, mm -hmm. and okay. so to this very day as we're sitting here right now I'm right. still shocked uh, uh, by by how shallow the Republican voter has become as it relates to real critical issues Republicans mm -hmm. used to be the grown-ups used to be the policy people and today mm -hmm. it's all about emotions and passions and well let me say I'm not shocked I'm surprised that the Republican Party allowed Donald Trump to take them hostage yeah and it all started when he, when Trump was on this birther movement. Sure. Now, if the Republicans had been smart, they would have told him to sit down and shut up right I then, agree. because yeah. he gained so much momentum with that, and he pulled out, he pulled the racists out of the closet, and they just followed him all along, and he even beat that horse after it was dead. Sure. And so they get, and instead of them working, and I, and I told this, I, I told, said this to Jimmy. When we talked last time, uh -huh. instead of the Republicans trying to work with Obama, they tried to obstruct everything he tried to do all along the way. Sure. And it started before he even got inaugurated. Now, well, it's already been admitted, New Gintrich admitted that he was in the meeting sure. when they said that whatever he tries to accomplish, we're going to try to offset it. Just block Other him congressmen have said the same thing. And they've blocked him at every turn. And even though they've done that, he's been able to accomplish quite a bit mm -hmm. in spite of the lack of cooperation. Now, the question is, mm -hmm. what kind of cooperation is Hillary going to get when she becomes president? Well, well, would you just say that's just partisan <coughs> politics? Yes, absolutely. And, and Norm is right. He is absolutely right. He did say exactly that. But I, I think it's the motivation. Mm -hmm. what, what was the motivation? Republicans were swept in the Obama wave, no question about it. Uh, they had to reel back. And the problem with that is that if you allow that momentum to continue on, you get swept again. 
Now, he could say that it worked from the Democratic side. He's right that they had two years where they just went crazy uh, without Republicans. Republicans did obstruct uh, Obama at every turn. Mm -hmm. But, but, stop. What happened? Tea Party came in. They took the House. So one can say that that probably wasn't the right thing to do. But if you're a Republican, you're like, yeah, it was because right. you took the House back right. and you only gave Pelosi two years of that. Right. I mean, it would have gone crazy. So to me, it, it sucks as an American, but as a politician, it was a it was a creative and 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 uh, successful strategy. Okay. Well, the divisiveness. Yes, is the uh, yeah, reason yeah, yeah. is the reason why people like me, independents especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, give Congress such a low approval Full rating. rating. Sure. We just want mm -hmm. people, regardless of whether they're Democrats or Republicans, to work together in our best interest. They obviously are working together in their own best interest. All they care about is that us voting for them right. and getting reelected. Yeah, because oh, I'm looking at it, aren't they supposed to be doing the people's business and the people's mm -hmm. work? Which is why we put uh, elected officials in office sure. to do the mm -hmm. work of but the But you people. can't do that losing. <laughs> and I and, mean, I, it's it's the system, you know, yeah. and, and um, you know, elections have consequences. Sure, yeah. And I remember I remember President Obama saying that when Republicans were huffing and puffing and threatening to blow his house down. And and he was right. Mm -hmm. And they they ram -rode it every piece of legislation they wanted through in those two years. And, and Republicans could have been could have been a little bit more mature about it. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not. They, they became petulant children. Mm -hmm. I, again, mm -hmm. I can't argue that fact, but. Right. At the okay. end of the day, it, it really is about winning an election and then being in a position to craft policy. Well, well, Jimmy, well, just, well, and, and with that being said, and, uh, and something struck uh, me earlier um, with the divisiveness and, mm -hmm. and things of nature, I'm going to ask a two-part question here. Um, do you think the rhetoric has ginned up this hatred and bigotry among voters these days and in the state of politics? And uh, what does this say for the American democracy and its political process to the world, when we can well, see. Let me say this. I want to. I, I agree. Okay. It started with the Tea Party takeover of the Republican sure. Party, and even though they represented a minority, even within the Republican Party, what mm -hmm. they did is they threatened the the uh, establishment Republicans mm -hmm. with recruiting people like themselves yes. right. to take their okay. place. And there were some pretty prominent Republicans who lost re-election. Sure. Eric Cantor? <laughs> Eric Cantor yeah. is a wow. perfect Which example. Which was a shock. Yeah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. but, but they had a message, and a lot of that started the bigotry. Uh -huh. Let's take our country back. Sure. Take it back to where? I mean, what what... What era in our lives do we want to go back to? Sure. Well, yeah, I, I no, agree. As African-American men here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's and, a good point. And, and, you know, that's one of the interesting dynamics about being a black Republican mm -hmm. is that, that that emphasis on black mm -hmm. uh, becomes very sensitive in the sense that you can hear, you know, uh, whether you're uh, de Democrat, Libertarian, okay. Republican, whatever that is, mm -hmm. as a black man in America, there are certain code words that make the hair stand up on, you know, on the mm -hmm. back of your neck. And, and to uh, Norm's point, there was, uh, there's no question that the divisiveness started in that piece. We've always had remnants of it, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. it, it's almost like somebody who says, hey, I'm not a racist, but you sure. can burn a cross in my backyard. <laughs> it, you, you know, okay, yeah. maybe you're not a racist, but, and, and I think unfortunately, uh, the Republican Party uh, allowed folks to burn something in their backyard yeah. while sitting back, like, "Well, it's not me. I'm not." You're not a and you're not a racist. The Republican but you may Party, not know the, Republic, yeah. the Republican mm -hmm. Party enabled it, and and to mm -hmm. to uh, discount or deny that is, is disingenuous, and and it doesn't it doesn't get us to the point of healing this country. Sure. You have to own it. You know, it's like any other twelve step program. First, admit you got a problem, right. and there's an ugliness in this country. It finds itself attracted to the Republican Party, mm -hmm. and it gets embraced, okay. and that is that that's problematic. Well, and, you know, I think we as a country should be ashamed of ourselves for allowing somebody like a Donald Trump right. to be able to be in a position to run for president of the United States and have an opportunity to maybe be president of the United States. You know, you, you hear a lot of people say, "I'm, sure. I'm leaving." I'm well, going yeah. to Canada. But, well, I'm but going can to Costa I, can I Rica. Say something to that? I'm going to Mexico. Can I, say, I, want, I want to say something to that because. Well, that's not funny, but you know, it, it, you, you're hearing a lot of that. It's true, but I, I want to say something to that, and this is going to come across as a shocker. But it, it's, real, it's really what makes our country great. It really is. Mm -hmm. I, it sucks, no question yeah. about it. But the democracy works. Sure. When a Donald Trump can come out of his tower and, and garner enough votes and enough primary. I mean, the system didn't change because of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. We he got he got in no different than a black man who decided to be president or now a woman 
who wants to be president. Right. It works. It just it means that sometimes it sucks to be on the other side, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you can't fault the system because the system works. Well, I agree well, with you 100 percent, Jimmy, because, you know, just like it's freedom of speech, freedom of expression. But at the same time, why can't Colin Kaepernick refuse to stand up for the national anthem? Oh, I think that's should. freedom of speech. I think he should. I, I, I'm, I'm with I you mean, on that. I think that's, so. that's, that's his right to, to mm-hmm. voice his objection with the things that are going on in this country. Yeah. And that and that and that begs me to the next question cuz I know we've got a we've we've got a whole host of things we sure. can talk yeah. about but I mm-hmm. wanted to to just get into this last point here. Um, speaking of the criminal justice system mm-hmm. uh, needing reform and you know uh, the policy that's addressing that mm-hmm. and do black lives matter? And what should we do about the the overuse of uh, lethal force in the in the police industry and primarily as it affects African American uh, men and women and people of color. Well, let me say this: you know, Will Smith. And has any of the candidates really addressed this issue? Uh, they they ask Will Smith, the famous actor, the question: Is racism more prevalent today than it ever has been? And his response was: It's just being filmed. Okay. When you look at Saginaw, we were the, we are the tip of the iceberg. We had an incident Milton here. Hall. Milton Hall. Yeah. yeah was captured on film. Even before it was captured on film, we had a hundred eyewitnesses, but those eyewitness testimonies didn't mean anything until Mm -hmm. we saw it for ourselves on film. And so, as a black man living in America, we know. <coughs> I mean, we've I've, we've always had to have the discussion with our sons. Sure. What to do if you get stopped by the police. If you, if, if, I, if I have a drink, and then I go home driving. Sure. When I see a police car, I sober up right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, 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 and a lot of people don't understand uh, how that affects our everyday life. And right. with we have about a minute minute left. I, I, it, uh, it does, Matt. Black lives do matter. Yeah. There's no question. And when it relates to law enforcement, mm-hmm. we have to start first at our elected officials. Mm-hmm. They've got to do a better job because at the end of the day, they're the front signing the, signing the paycheck of, mm-hmm. our, of our law enforcement folks. They've got to come up with a better screening process and policy that means that the right people are governing the right communities. And that's a huge problem because you've got people afraid when they walk into a community of people they don't know. And it's toxic. And that's what we're starting to see. So, again, I would encourage people to, to start, like all politics are local, sure. you need to start electing better people to make sure that the people policing you are the right folks. Excellent. Well, in order to elect those people, you've got to get out and vote. Absolutely. Right. I agree. Well said. Get out and Absolutely. vote and be aware of the, the issues. And with that being said, uh, hopefully within, these, within the next uh, few debates that we see here in the process, mm-hmm. a lot of these issues uh, will be addressed and we can actually see who's best suited for uh, President of the United States. Let's hope. Mr. Green, Mr. Braddock, thank you. This conversation could go on forever, and <laughs> I may have to have you back again. <laughs> but thank you all for uh, coming to Soul Issue today and uh, sharing your insights and viewpoints. Oh, well, we appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you too. Thank you. Get out and vote. Yes, <laughs> get out and vote. Remember, general election day is Tuesday, November 8th, and polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Visit vote411.org to get detailed information about any voting questions you